press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. Hi students, welcome to your English class. Today we are going to continue another chapter that is Babur Ali. Now this person, Babur Ali, he has uh, contributed a lot to the society and has been one of the youngest headmasters of one of the schools that we are going to find out which one it is. He himself, he himself was a student. After he finished his uh, classes, he used to go and teach others. What he used to teach, how he used to teach, uh, and what are the aspects that uh, Babur Ali used to do, we're going to find out in this lesson. Now, this lesson is written by Samarpita Mukherjee Sharma. Uh, she has been uh, of immense help to the society and her contributions are um, above anybody's limits. Now she was the associate uh, creative, uh, creative editor of the Youth Leader India and that's how one of the volunteers goes and describes the story of Barbara Lee for us. She has uh, been that creative, uh, creative editor for the India chapter of Youth Leader magazine. Also, she has been a very action-oriented and dynamic um, online magazine. She has an online magazine network focusing that has brought a lot of changes, a lot of initiatives and uh, has given positive uh, enforcement and positive tools to the society for a, a different kind of transformation that was there. Now, in this lesson also, we are going to list, uh, we are going to list out certain things Babur Ali does for the transformation of the society in different ways. Basic is uh, giving education to the others. Who is uh, he giving to? What is his background? Where is he from? All that is dealt in the chapter as somebody else is narrating us uh, the story of Babur Ali. Here I want you to... Uh, Look at the, follow your copies on page number 45 in your text, okay? The tagline that's written there for Babur Ali, world's youngest headmaster making remarkable changes in India. So he's our world's youngest headmaster. We'll see at the what age uh, he became the headmaster as we read further. But as he was the youngest, he has made a lot of changes, remarkable changes. Those have touched uh, many people's lives. Those have, uh, those that have uh, made a lot of changes with others. Now here, uh, you may know of certain people who have done certain activities like that, or who have been instrumental in bringing changes in the society who have put their heart and soul in making the society better. We have so many examples around us. We may have our own family members. We may have somebody in our schools, some in our, somebody in our colleges. We may have somebody in our neighborhood. Wherever they are, whoever, whoever it is, at least we will know of one or two people who have uh, given their heart and soul in contributing to the society. May not be in one particular field, may not be only in education, maybe in the health sector, maybe through social work, maybe uh, taking care of certain people, teaching them or whatever it is, any kind of uh, service that they have done for one basic goal that is transformation in the society. They didn't want to suffer, they didn't want others to suffer along with them and that is why uh, they have taken everything in their hands and made everything beautiful that they can. Alright, we are going to begin the lesson today now. Uh, Babur Ali, Samarpita Mukherjee Sharma. Follow your copies on page 45. So we will read and then uh, the explanation will follow. Babur Ali must be the youngest headmaster in the world as he is only 16. So what's his age? He's 16 
and he is almost of your age, isn't it? You may be 15 and a half to 16, almost of your age, he is uh, the youngest headmaster in the world. He is a teenager who is in charge of teaching hundreds of students in his family's backyard where he runs classes for poor children from his village. Now he himself uh, is taking the charge, he's a teenager, 16 isn't it, he's a teenager. What is the responsibility that he's taking? He's taking the responsibility of teaching hundreds of students where? In his family backyard, that is at the backyard in his house, okay. Who is he taking classes for? He's taking classes for the poor children in his villages. Those who cannot afford a good education, he takes classes for them in his family's backyard. Now, certain things are very important in this lesson. Uh, all this can come for one mark for you, okay? May or may not, cannot say, but those are like one mark questions uh, always. Okay? Uh, Figure out the prepositions that are there because you do have articles and prepositions. Uh, it may come in your grammar section. So sentences are picked out from the textbook for your uh, question paper. So you must be very careful as you read the textbook. The story of this young man from Murshidabad in West Bengal is a remarkable tale of the desire of learn, desire to learn amid the direst poverty. Now. Where is he from? Please uh, mark it. Okay, it's this story of a teenager who is from Murshidabad in West Bengal who has uh, taken the responsibility on his shoulders to uh, show his interest or show his desire, show his uh, capacity to teach and uh, teach and empower others who are into the lowest uh, category of poverty. Okay, direst is too horrible. Uh, you that's uh, uh, not you cannot get away above that level. It's too low kind of a, uh, a poverty, uh, poverty situation that is there. Okay, our Bangladesh-based YL volunteer Tanvir would like to introduce you to this extraordinary change maker. Now, youth leader or youth nexus. Okay, this is a sign kind of a youth formation that is there, which is striving for change and transformation and having uh, to take on the freedom in the community. They are trying, basic understanding is they are doing uh, transformation or they are helping out people and others. Basic young people become youth leaders there, okay. So youth leader, volunteer. So she is the creative editor of Youth Leader India, so that's how it's derived from. So this volunteer Tanvir, uh, a Bangladesh based uh, person, now he is going to tell us the story of the extraordinary change maker that is uh, Babur Ali. Alright, follow your copies. Babur wakes up every morning at 7 and starts his day by doing some household chores. So Babur wakes at uh, 7 am and then he goes on to do his uh, regular routine in the morning, okay, regular task, George's are regular task or your routine work that is there. Then he takes an auto rickshaw first and later walks 5 kilometers to the Kosim Bazar Raj Govinda Sundari Vidya Peet, where he is a class 12th student. Now see his uh, daily activities that is there, he takes an auto rickshaw, first he takes an auto rickshaw from his house and then gets down somewhere and then he again walks 5 kilometers ahead to reach where? To reach to his uh, uh, college that is Kosam Bazar Rajko in the Sundari Vidyapit. He is a 12th, 12th grade student, okay? So please uh, mark that Kosam Bazar Rajko in the Sundari Vidyapit. Babur is the thin and gangly boy who sits in the middle of the front row. Babur is very thin, you can see the picture on page number 45, he doesn't seem that thin but he's still uh, thinner than what they have described. Gangly is very skinny, again uh, another substitute for thin, okay, very skinny boy, skinny isn't, you can only see the bones, that's, that's how skinny means. 
Babur Ali, oh, sorry, Babur is thin and a gangly boy who sits in the middle of the front row. So he's sitting in the front row, but he sits in between. Studious, smart, and austere in his blue and white uniform, Babur is a model student. So he's very studious, he's smart, he is focused on what he has to do. Okay? And austere, he's very strict, disciplined in what he is doing. In his blue and white uniform, maybe blue trousers and white shirt. So in his uniform, he looks very disciplined and neat uh, uh, dressing that he has done. So Baba becomes a role model for the other students, a model student. He is also the first member of his family to get a proper education. So he is the first generation student, okay, the first generation learner. That is, he is the first one in his uh, family to go and study. In school, he is an ideal student, but it is what he does after his school hours that intrigues the entire world. So he is a good student at school, he is a good student uh, uh, in his educational areas, but what he does after his uh, school uh, college hours is more important to uh, uh, us and it is more uh, fascinating to know. Intriguing is fascinating or uh, interesting to curiosity, a kind of curiosity that we have uh, for the entire world to know what he does in the evening hours after his uh, school hours. When every other teenager goes running off to the playground and gets busy with the football, cricket and other sports, Baba makes his way to an afternoon school where he is the headmaster of a school of 800 students. So mark that 800 students. Now, what kind of work do you do after you go uh, home? Maybe you while around, some go to play, some watch TV, okay? So you're spending your time, you're leisurely spending your time, isn't it? Then you get serious on to whatever work you have to do from your college hours or uh, whatever is given as uh, assignments or whatever for you. But as soon as you go, you don't sit with your books, isn't it? You go play, you go meet your friends or you go somewhere, you have to go for an outing with your family or you sit and watch TV, you have snacks. So we are, we are uh, having a form of uh, rest time, isn't it rest time? But Ababra Ali doesn't do like that. What does Ababra what does Abab Ali do? After his uh, school hours, in the afternoon he goes to his school where he is the headmaster and 800 students are along with him. Alright? Yeah. Welcome to Babur Ali's school. Now we are in Babur Ali's school. Imagine yourself to be in Babur Ali's school, okay? All right. It's a dilapidated concrete structure covered in half-toned posters. Okay, dilapidated is like decayed, broken, worn out. Okay, not uh, in a proper room. It's like a dingy room that we... Uh, mentioned in Oromanishan, okay, very not organized in a way. So concrete structure covered in half turned posters. So there is there are concrete walls there, but uh, other posters are laid down to cover the other half that is there. Inside in a tiny dank room behind a desk sits someone, even the Queen of England knows by name and you should too. So dank is unpleasant. So, this is a very small, a tiny room, an unpleasant room. I said, uh, it's not organized. So, it's broken down, it's worn out. Everything is here and there, not a perfect classroom as such. So, in this dank room, behind a desk, behind a desk, sits someone, even the Queen of England knows by name, and you should too. So, our volunteer says, the Queen of England also knows his name and you fellow students will also have to know who this Barbarali is. Behind the office is a gate that opens to Barber's home. Now there is a small office area but if you open the gate you go to uh, go behind to Barber's house. This is where rows of poor unprivileged kids sit under the open blue sky and learn what most children in the modern world pay hundreds of dollars for for free. Now what's happening here, if you're opening the gate, you're going behind to Babur's house and there in Babur's house there are 800 unprivileged children who are studying 
or uh, Babur is teaching them. What's happening here? They are very poor. I told you they are in the lowest category of being poor. There are a lot of poverty within themselves. So these children have come here. They are um, not, uh, they are not, their parents cannot afford a good education for them. Some pay dollars and dollars. We pay so much of money to get an education. Even our uh, youngest kids, if you go to this Montessori and um, your lower kgs and upper kgs, even those students have a lot of fees, which maybe 10 years back a student may have finished his degree by then. Okay, so there is a difference of uh, the fee structures also now. Here in Barber School, what's going to happen? What is happening here? Lot of unprivileged kids, okay? They are not unprivileged as what? You're not enjoying the same standards as uh, a person who is enjoying certain uh, benefits of his living. Unprivileged. They are not privileged to have a standard kind of life. These children are picked by Babur Ali and he brings them to the school so that they can also study and they can also learn. Where do they sit? Under the open blue sky. Open blue sky. There is the, this is uh, maybe Babur Ali, Babur Ali's house and there's just a courtyard like and then open area, open blue sky, they sit there and they learn. In the modern world, most of the parents may be paying dollars for it, but here Babur is teaching them for free, free of cost. Okay. This is where 800 kids who are deprived from their basic rights for education walk miles to learn free of cost the basic and fundamentals of life. Now here there are 800 students in his school, that's mentioned already, so you register in your mind there are 800 students who are deprived, that is, they are not given, you lack something, I'm deprived of something, that is, I'm not getting what I want. What are these students deprived of? These students are deprived of the education that they would like to get. Their basic right for education, see, that is what they are deprived of. So what do they walk? They walk miles to learn. Their children are walking miles and miles away to learn free of cost and learn the basics of life. Learn, the underst learn how to live. Learn certain things that are necessary for a living. Okay, fundamentals are values of life. Fundamentals of life. Okay, so now we'll move on. So let's take a minute over here and think. So now the volunteer is telling us, let's take a minute and think of certain things that are there. What I want you to think is how privileged you are. You are getting an affordable education. Your parents can afford to give you an education. You are learning something. You are far better than these children who are. And this is not a made up story that is there. This is a true story that's happening. So think about those children and compare yourselves with them. I want you to uh, think now how privileged are you are comparing to these children who are studying in Babur Ali's school. Far more better than those children, isn't it? Our standards of living are okay. We may be belonging to any class of families, but at least we can afford an education. We can learn, we can study. We have an exposure to the environment. Most of them are not. So many children are into ch uh, child labor, so many children are not given the basic right of education. But we have. We have got it and we must keep that dignity of uh, learning. We must respect our uh, system of education. We must respect the knowledge that we get. Because so many children don't get it. Now we'll see what does uh, uh, we, uh, what does this volunteer tell us. While we whine about our allowances and fuss about staying out late, this average boy from a small village is actually helping to make this world a better place. Whine is cry. Okay? Now, what is he asking us to think? He's saying, we cry about certain things. Now, if you don't get 500 rupees as a pocket money, we fuss about it, fuss about that. And we say, why don't you give me? Why can't I have this? We need a lot of possessions that are there. Every human nature is such. The more we have, the more we want. 
even those who have less of it they also want it but they know their sacrifices they know how much of difficulty it is to get even uh, one penny for them they are struggling to eat and live but on the other hand when our standards of living are high we want to buy clothes we want to buy eatables we want to buy or we want to go for a movie we want to do so many other things so that's what he's saying when we are crying about or when we are fussing about our um, allowances or our things that we have you must give a thought to what barbara lee is doing to the society okay we are fussing about so many things that are happening here in this lesson i want you to uh, learn the art of gratefulness okay gratitude is i want what i want you to take away from this lesson that will come in the end but here what barbara lee doing when when all the other students are maybe playing around or uh, just going around and enjoying barbara lee is going back to his village gathering all these students and teaching them and he is making uh, he is making the world a better place to live in okay uh if you have heard the song heal the world i think that has a lot of meaning uh just go and see heal the world uh make it a better place for you and for me uh i'm not getting the other lines but uh, just i'll uh, see the title of the song is heal the world so that has a lot of meaning certain things i think it's applicable over here today all around the world where millions of children are being deprived from literacy because their families cannot bear the expenses this one school boy from india is trying to change that see uh the comparison that's given over here there are so many millions of children who are deprived of an education deprived of literacy and because their families cannot afford they are they don't uh, their families don't have an enough income to uh, give an education to their child but on the other hand babar ali is doing it for free he may not get anything out of it he may not be making money he may not be uh, getting a single paisa for it but he is doing out of love out of his interest to teach those other children so what is he getting in return those people are becoming educated they will have a, a sensible and a fruitful future than uh, working for something else which they have no education on at least you see that is what to learn the basic fundamentals of life they come to babrali's school okay we'll move on so at the age of 16 babrali is the world's youngest headmaster so at the age of 16 is a teenager he is the world's youngest headmaster all right babar happens to be one of the fortunate souls in his village so he is one of the luckiest souls fortunate okay one of the luckiest souls in his village in the bapta neighborhood of gang gangapur village in west bengal's murshidabad babar lives with his three siblings and his parents in a thatched house which is the size of an average city kitchen so would we be able to live in a room which is an average size kitchen uh, if you have gone to the cities and if you have gone to the apartments okay the flats the kitchens are very small and here how many of them are living his parents and three siblings okay so his siblings are his brothers and sisters his siblings and his parents in uh, the bapta neighborhood of gangapur village in west bengal's murshidabad in a thatched house thatched house is the roof covered with straw hay if you go to the village sites uh, these kinds of houses you can find okay other material straw is put hay is put material is put you make a roof out of it like a hut okay which is the size of an average city kitchen so it's a very small room so many people are staying within it yet ironically he is still among the privileged ones in his village because unlike most children there he went to school and got formal education why is he fortunate now why is he uh, even though he stays in a very small house see having a small house 
or having uh, not having certain things doesn't deprive you of uh, many other things that are there. Certain there are very uh, children who come from poor backgrounds, but they still uh, have a decent education that is there. So Babur Ali is one among them. Even though his house was small, that didn't deprive him of getting a education. He went to school and he got a formal education. Formal is how you come to uh, colleges and learn. That's formal education. He was better off also in being the son of Nasiruddin Sheikh. Okay, his father's name is Nasiruddin Sheikh. Now, our Mr. Nasiruddin is a jute seller and a dropout who believes that education is a man's true religion and who initially supported his son's venture with his own income. All right, uh, you must know what Nasiruddin is doing and how he believed in his son. So, that's important. So he was a jute seller, okay, uh, jute, was, uh, jute was being sold by him and he was a dropout, he didn't continue his education but even though he was a dropout, what did he believe? He believed that education is a, education is a man's true religion and we are fighting on the basis uh, or on the name of religion, isn't it? A, B, C, A, we are belonging to this religion, that religion but here Nasruddin Sheikh believes Education is a man's true religion. That is where you get enlightenment. Through education is what transformation you can do because of the enlightenment process or because of the knowledge that you uh, seek. And then when his, uh, when his son, see initially to at least he must have something. Babar Ali must have something to start with. So the father supported him uh, with his income to start his uh, kind of a school. Son's venture is, now if I plan to put up a business, that's my starting venture. Okay, like a journey that I would like to uh, begin. Okay, moving on. Coming from a privileged family, Babur realized he must do something for other children in this village. Now he himself was of a poor background, then he realized at least I can get a formal education. But there are so many children around me who don't even have... Uh, it's the slightest form of education that they can get. So I must do something to help them. And as a backbone, his father Nasruddin Sheikh stood by him and with a certain kind of income uh, through what uh, jute that he sold, he helped his son in this kind of a uh, venture that he would like to educate the others. Even though children are provided free education, sending children to school is not entirely free of cost. Although the children are taught for free, they still have to pay for uniforms, books, etc. That is why a lot of families cannot afford to send their children to school. Thus, instead of going to school, most of the boys help out their families by working as mechanics, day laborers, grass cutters, livestock herders, etc. Whereas girls work as maid servants in the village where they cook, clean, wash clothes and dishes for their employers. Babar Ali wanted to change this. That is why he took the initiative of opening his very own school. Now, we understand why Babar Ali wanted to start it. Why? Because see, there were certain schools who gave free education. But sending them to school was not free of cost. What they learned there was free of cost. But coming there was not free of cost. They had to pay for their uniforms. They had to pay for their books and certain other materials that were given in school. A lot of families could not afford even to pay for the uniforms and the uh, books. Okay, So, instead of going to school, instead of getting an education, these boys and girls stayed back at home and wanted to help their families. If they go to work, at least there is some kind of income that's coming. But if they go to school, there is an expense that is there. So, boys used to work as mechanics, day laborers, grass cutters, okay, livestock herders who take care of a group of animals. Then girls used to work as maid servants, maids in the villages. What they used to do? They used to clean, cook, wash clothes and dishes for their employers, whoever used to employ now, Ababar Ali didn't like it. 
he didn't want children to struggle at a very young age working like this he was also very young at the age of 16 he was also very young not too old for uh, anything he want he didn't like this the children are working children are uh, trying to be like support system for the family when that is the time they have to study and play and learn so he wanted to change this and he went on to take uh, the initiative of opening his own school all right i would like to uh, stop at this uh, in the next class we will see about which is the school that he uh, started and how he went on to take up the responsibility of making this school or having a bigger difference in this school all right so we'll see uh, the name of the school what he does in his school and how he has been benefited by many others who have contributed in uh, making this society better all right i shall see you in the uh, next class thank you very much for listening